So why do I get a special chair? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm special? Hey, I like these chairs. They go back to kind of, oh, this one yeah. looks too <laughs> Hey, how is everybody? Okay. Wow, I love all these t-shirts, man. You guys have just gone all out. I love this one. What is this? These are all of the... Yeah, the OG, I guess. Oh, the OG. I mean, I was going to, you know, maybe put them there somehow. Like, somehow, you know. just kind of just <laughs> yeah, composite me in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killed my goldfish. Oh, yeah. That. And she killed my goldfish. <laughs> That's right. That was about Ferguson, right? Yeah, yeah it's her, Lou Kelly. What's that? It's her, Lou Kelly. Oh, Lou Kelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. My goldfish. Yeah. Right. Are you having a good day? Yeah. It's yeah. pretty cool, huh? Yeah. It's awesome. How cool is it? Was Dan, how was Dan on the on the stage? Oh, oh, she's so she, yeah, she's great. She goes. She just says to me yesterday. She goes, "Oh, when I get on that stage, you know, I just fucking get out there. I just go, go for it. Fucking, I'm just, it. Fucking, I'm just yeah. getting on this, you know." And the poor MC doesn't have anything to do because I'm just like, oh, fucking, here we go, let's go." Uh -huh. Yeah. I feel like I was like, uh, you know, fairly subdued compared to her, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, telling some good stories though, which is nice, right? You're getting yes. some. It's nice for you guys yeah, to sure. get that like inside. Because uh, scoop, right? Like get life or, you know. Well, <laughs> we didn't really give ourselves a chance because we got in yesterday and a buddy of mine lives here and uh, I said, hey, we're going out for dinner. So we went out for dinner. We, got, we, we didn't get to the hotel until about six, right after we kind of landed and then we had to get a, a COVID test for our flight back, you know, to, within uh -huh. 72 hours, you've got to have another one. So. Well, that was a little bit of time the airport. Anyway, and then the traffic was crazy from the airport yeah. to the hotel. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we get to the hotel and then we were like, we're really hungry. And Nicole was like, I'm starving, man, let's go. So we went out to Duck Duck Goose. No, Duck Duck Goat. Oh, wow. It's a restaurant. No, not heard of it? No. <laughs> like, duck Duck Goat is what it's called. It's an interesting name. Yeah, right, it's an interesting name. But it had, been come, it had come highly recommended right to us. So you've got to go there. That was really nice, but we struck, We almost didn't get a table, but we went in there and sweet talked the people in there, and <laughs> kind of put on the Australian accent. Oh wait, we've we've come all the way from Australia <laughs> just to eat here because we heard it, it was amazing. <laughs> we, we just came out just to eat at this restaurant. They were oh okay, let's see if we can find you a table. You know, oh, okay, we can we can fit you in. And then we went at a cocktail somewhere else, and then we had a few drinks while we we're having dinner. You know, so uh, cut to like. I don't know, one o'clock, one a.m. or something. Wow, that's been our day every day, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's actually a better way, you know, from, from my mind, it's better, well, like, it's not like we went out and got completely shit faster, really, but we went out and you kept yourself going until, you know, after midnight, yeah. get a solid seven hours rather than going to bed Fresh. early and then waking up and going, I can't get back to sleep because of the time difference and yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. You, you kind of hold yourself off, sleep, and then you sleep right through. You wake up, and then we're we're out here. So we knew it was going to be a big day. You know, that's always it's always. Uh, well, Dan was speaking from experience, and she was like, "Yes, you know, it's a big day, but we it's it's really fun and really you know it's great to meet everybody and everything. But it is a long day from start to finish. It's kind of like a long day. But but you know, we'll probably go out again tonight. And, <laughs> Where are you going? A buddy of mine also. <laughs> well, the same, this, this buddy of mine, he he's a member of the, the Soho House, oh, nice. which is this kind of private club thing. He's like, you know, let's go. We went up to the top of this building and yeah, you know, he showed us around. It's crazy, it's really nice. So that's where we kind of hung out as well. Nice. Yeah. Did anyone recognize you guys as Duck Duck? Uh, no. Yeah. No. No, we didn't get recognized. Wow. Like, uh, but that's okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. You got to enjoy it first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I was saying before, it's like this show is kind of, it's not like kind of mega, mega famous, like, you know, there are millions and millions and millions of people watch it. It's that thing of like the people who do watch it are like, man, this is, this is, you know, it feels mm. so, de you know, for, they're, they're, if, you're, if you're a fan of the show, you're a real fan of the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. You don't just watch the show and go, yeah, I like that show. That was like, no, oh sure, my yeah. God, I live for it. You know, so. <laughs> so I hope That's, you felt our love, you know, when we were there. I hope you guys feel how much we, we love We totally you. feel it. And that's what I was saying in that, on, the, on the stage. It's like, we, we wouldn't be able to have these experiences. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have made it to, to eight, nine episodes, nine seasons of 100 episodes, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for that mm -hmm. kind of... The fervor. The, the whole thing, when we got cancelled after season seven, so season seven they came to us, mm -hmm. Brian Walsh, who's the head of Ho Foxtel, which is the main kind of producing network, they said, oh, we're calling a cast meeting. 
Brian Walsh is coming, Penny Wynn is coming, the producer, Joe Porter's gonna be there. And we're like, ooh, that's not, that's not a normal thing. They wouldn't normally come down unless there was some sort of grim news. That's what Kate Atkinson was saying. She's like, no, I think we've been canceled, you know. Because the idea was we were meant to do nine, like they were saying it was, we were hopefully gonna do nine. We got to seven, the end of seven. They sat us all down, had a meeting and said, we're, we're deciding to cancel the show, right? It's all gonna be finished. And we had that rap party and we said goodbye to everyone and to our characters and to the show as if that was done, right? Always knew that there was a little bit of a possibility in the background that it may come back, but it was, for, at that, to all intents and purposes, at that point they said, we're finished, we're done. And we went to the Logie Awards that year in Australia, which is like the Emmy Awards, you know, like the, you know, the Emmys yep. here, but it's more of, it's of, the, of the local Australian industry, right? So we went to that to the award ceremony that year and won. There's two drama categories. There's the most outstanding, which is 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 voted by the industry peers and that sort of stuff. And you know that's the one that you want to win because it means that you, as the industry have said, that's the best drama this year. And then there's most popular, which is like the it's TV Week magazine, right? So you open up TV, you fill out the form, or you go online and you go, I want to vote for Wentworth, whatever. And that one is not you. We don't we don't usually win that one because there's other shows that are on commercial TV networks, free to air networks. Because uh, Wentworth is on cable. It's called Foxtel, which is like cable yeah. TV, right? You yeah. got to you got to subscribe to it. You got to pay for it, right? But so we don't usually win the most most popular because the networks, you know, kind of have the monopoly over yeah. the amount of people that they have watching the shows. But that year we won the most outstanding and the most popular wow. TV yeah. drama. And so they, they, they were kind of like, wow. Well, and there was also a big petition, which I don't know whether <laughs> you guys were involved with that, but there was a petition, an online petition that said, we can't go, go away, sign the petition. Yeah. You know, a yeah, lot of people, and it was like, yeah, no, there was a lot of, and they went, well, you know what? There is, well, there is a crazy groundswell of support for this show. What are we doing, you know, canceling it? So then they kind of called us up and said, we're back on. And we're like, oh, cool. And they said, not only are we back on, we're doing two seasons back to back. And that's why we shot season eight and eight B, whenever, or you know, season eight and nine, we're both shot at the same time. Basically, we're right, right through. Season one, season, season eight, 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 eight. How come they did that anyway, saying A and B instead of just saying, oh, what's the eight point and nine. You know what the point was? <laughs> each, each season, and every the actors get it always got a, a, a you know it's negotiated but it's almost standard like a ten percent bump for each season. But if they went no this is one long season oh, okay. that we're oh. dividing in two, oh, they got it all yeah. for that you know for that one. That's one of the reasons yeah. you know but you know they they were trying to save money where they could mm. because you know because being cancelled they had to kind of find that money again yeah, sort of yeah. to go again. And I don't think they quite had as much you know almost like it's almost like. When COVID happened, they were probably a bit a bit relieved because it made it the cheapest show to make mm. in a, in a sense because you didn't do any of that location work and it was all contained. But then maybe it made it even more expensive because of all the protocols that were in place. I don't know, but you know, it's definitely done now. And that's sad. Yeah. You know, Kate yeah. I, Kate Jenkinson, really is, uh, yeah. Kate Jenkinson, and I would often sort of talk about you know. When then the question would come up in the green room, like, would you go again if you, if if, uh, if another season came up? And we're, and we're both like, we do this show until we fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> if this if this was the yeah. if someone said you know you can do one show for the rest of your life and that's it you know uh, this yeah. be it for me. Mm. Yeah. It's so great. I mean, it's such yeah. a great. Like I said, big, we're all fans of the show, you know, and that's a really. It's not unique. You do have other shows that you people are fans of that work on it, but this is really it's a special thing. Everybody who works on it is a fan of the show. No, for yeah. sure. I didn't get into it until like the fifth season. One of my best friends, he was like, "You gotta watch the show." Then one, I'm like, "Yeah, I'll get around." Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah and yeah. then once I got into, once yeah. I got, into, you know, and then did you go back to start? Yeah, yeah. You can't start a season five. No, <laughs> right? No, no. My husband did when you came on the show. He started watching it because he didn't see it in the background, and we even went and saw the first con. And then as soon as Jakey, because oh, yeah. he called it, I was like, I'm about to go and see Jakey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so that was like you kind of went towards the men and the stronger like type of personality. Yeah, yeah. He uses it in here. 
his classes teaching English and creative writing and things like that. Oh, well. Jakey. Jakey. Yeah, he loves the Brody guy. Yeah, it was one of, it was <laughs> so, an, Jake it's another Snake. question, Jake the Snake, it's, it's another <laughs> question that comes up for the male actors on the show, you know, what was it like working, you know, in that sort of such a female-centric okay, okay. show? Yeah. Well, I mean, it was great. I mean, it's because we're working with, you know, you, it, it's such a gift as an actor to work with such high caliber actors, you know, and I said to you, mm -hmm. I've always been a fan of Pamela Ray, and here I am, find, I find myself dancing with her, you know what I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in the scenes, you know, and we're, and we're kind of working off each other and all that sort of early <laughs> stuff with Ferguson was so much fun to play. And you know she's she's just a, she's a, she's peerless as an actor you know, mm -hmm. um, Kate Atkinson uh, you know uh, um, basically all of the all of the actors are just high quality professional mm -hmm. people and I always say it's like you have no option but to sort of step up to an, another level of, of performance yeah. you know what I mean I feel like I became a, a way better actor working uh, through my experience of working on the show and that's not just experience of doing you know however many episodes it's a working with caliber actors that that bring you up to that higher echelon of, of experience and, and expertise you know so um that was just amazing and then also the the male characters kind of did stand out a little bit more because there was fewer of them it was really me and will that were just the kind of the, the main from when i turned up you know, that were the main sort of male characters, and then there was Sean Brody as well in that one episode, see, in, episode in season seven. But, um, you know, you get, you, you, it was almost like you got a little bit more focus as a male because of the fact that there were so many females. So mm -hmm. it's, not like, it's not like we were always played second fiddle to the females in the show. We had strong mm -hmm. storylines. We had, you know, they were really, oh, yeah. they were all good storylines for all mm -hmm. the, the yeah. regulars in the show. So it was just, and it's also, a real, a real joy to be to have been part of such a groundbreaking show, you know, mm. that people still love and will love for so yeah, long. Exactly, it's yeah. one of those shows I think that people. Which will of love. your scenes required the most retakes? The most retakes? Uh -huh. oh, well, <laughs> I think I'm throwing uh, Robbie Magasiva under the bus. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You've heard that yeah. those stories. That. Just I remember there, there, there be times when we were in and it was usually in the executive office right so when he was either either governor or he was deputy governor and stuff like that so we would shoot all of these scenes in the one day like we just go right they're going to shoot all the scenes from this block two episodes that happen in the executive offices bang and then in the hallway and then the other offices and then the main the governor's office so they were always really big days and robbie would sort of you know like he was would get into a good rhythm i used to like having big days like that because you really do get a rhythm going on and you sort of, right, next scene, it's another big scene, moving it around the room, right, do that, now next scene, it's another big one. So you, you just have to bring your A game the whole day. There's no, you can't slack off at all because you're, you just have to be, you know, on the whole, the whole day, right? And, but then, yeah, Robbie would sort of sometimes just get a little bit kind of tongue-tied on something and it'd be always the same word right you'd get to it and we'd all be like oh you got it it's gonna get to it and he'd go and he'd go fuck i fucking keep fucking it up and he's throwing shit around the room we're like robbie it's cool just relax no worries and the, the first assistant director's like robbie it's okay we'll just even if we have to just get that one line as one little cutaway and we can edit it in yeah. don't stress about it you know but he would get himself you could see him and you could see it happening. As soon as he started messing up one line, and if he did it again, you go, I can see where this is going. This is going to be like <laughs> epic. And it sometimes got to like 20 times that he went and he fucked it up on this one line. And he'd, and he'd be sitting there like going, I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm so sorry. And we're like, dude, it's okay, don't you know? Because you could yeah. see the more worked up he was getting, the more he was messing up the line. And then that was a self perpetuating problem that just got to. It just it just overwhelmed it, you know. So, uh, you know that I, I when I'm sort of mad now buying my trumpet. I I didn't often stuff things up. Sometimes I did, but I didn't often have to do too many retakes of a certain thing. Um, and then you, you, one of my favourite things is watching goof reels, right? You love that sort oh, of yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 Particularly at the end of this season, when oh, yeah. the last season, when they. They put together that great little reel, some of it emotional kind of stuff, but some of it 
jokes and messing around and goofing off and you know, that, I love seeing those sort of things where someone stuffs up a line and they goes, ah, it's your name, it's your name. Yeah. I said the wrong line. Or, or you yeah. come in and someone's left something there and you go, oh, this is the director's uh, drink bottle, everyone, and it's in, it's in a take and stuff. And they're like, oh, shit. You know, so uh, there, is a, there, is a, there, there is a thing, I don't know if you know about this, in the Australian industry, television industry, it's a rule, right? A flat out rule. If your phone goes off in the middle of a take, you know, like ring, you know, go out there, and we're like, whose phone is that? Like, it's if there's, you know, okay, and rolling, and there's an action, and someone's phone goes off in the background, whoever's phone that is has to buy a slab of beer, which is a carton of beer, <laughs> for the crew. Right? It's, it's, a, it's a, a it happens, well, no, the thing is, not, not, not very often. Oh, has you it get to, to you? It, oh, not on this, not on this show, <laughs> but it has happened to me on other things. Instantly, you like, because it's called a slab in Australia. It's like, you, you find goes and everyone goes, slab, slab, and everyone just starts calling, and you go, that was mine, that was mine, okay, no worries. What are we drinking, everyone? You know, Peroni, whatever, you know, so, and, you know, and sure enough, on that, it has to happen by that Friday, right? You've got to present the, the slab for your phone going off, you know, so. Um, Not worth it. Huh? Not worth it. Yeah, I know. But then again, it's kind of a, it's kind of, you know, if you do get slabbed, you sort of, you, you buy your slab and everyone goes, all right, thanks, man. You know, and then you, and then you have a drink on a Friday after, after, after work. So everyone has a, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a good thing in the end. It can be, right? So, but, um. If you're one of the people that your phone didn't go off and you're getting the free beer. I would be, I would be like, you know, I'd get there, I'd make sure it's on silent, make sure it's on do not disturb. I'm telling you right now, so it's oh, on yeah. silent, you know, you get a sample. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it. There's somebody else's phone, like, laying there, I'll put the volume up. So yeah, 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 yeah. And then call yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So with all the acting that you've, you've done in your career, what would you say is, like, the most memorable for you? Well, I, you know, I often actually think about this question, and, and Wentworth is actually the, for me, is, is the pinnacle of what I have achieved in my acting career. I've, I've, done, I've done lots of other stuff.